Hi everybody, this is God's Girl G, and thank you so much for joining me today. For those of you who are new to my channel, welcome. And for those of you returning to this channel to watch this video and you're not already subscribed, I'm gonna encourage you to do so by clicking the subscribe icon below. And if during the course of this video, you hear something that you like, click the thumbs up, comment below, or better yet, share this video with someone who you feel could benefit from this information. With that stated, let's get into today's discussion. As a young woman reading the Bible, the book of Esther had a profound impact on me. Esther is one of my favorite women in the Bible because not only was she cute, but she was wise. Now, I recently did a video all about the wisdom and courage of Queen Esther. So if you've not had a chance to listen to that, after viewing this video, you might wanna go back and listen to it because I do a synopsis about the story of Esther when she's presented to the king. So today is a continuation of the study of the book of Esther and we're going to dive into those 12 months of beauty treatments before Esther could be presented to the king. So when I was doing my studies about Queen Esther, it is only natural that when you run into and read that she underwent 12 months of beauty treatments, it's only natural to say, what in the world are these beauty treatments? But let's make sure we're all on the same page, shall we? Esther was a Jewish girl who by decree of King Xerxes was taken to be a part of his harem. And God used Esther to save the Jewish people from annihilation by giving her favor with the king. And that king made her queen of a nation. Esther is an incredible demonstration of the power of a woman submitted to God's will. So let's get into today's discussion more about her beauty treatments. Now, in order to understand the purpose and the type of these beauty treatments, we got to consider the time and the place of this story. Now, based upon historians, the story of Esther took place somewhere around 490 BC. Now, during 490 BC, the people of this time lived in dusty rock filled places. They wore sandals on their feet, making their feet tough, cracked, and exposed to parasites. I'm a pause for the cause right there. Hold up. Did y'all know that parasites can get into your body through your feet? So some of y'all walking around barefoot outside, <laughs> you better put some shoes on. All right, back to the topic. Their skin also was just dry due to the sun and wind exposure. Now, the scripture does not really explain why the beauty treatment process took so long. I mean, 12 months is a long time. Do you think we could accomplish that in six months? I, I think we could have accomplished it in six months. But anyway, it took 12 months to undergo and to complete these beauty treatments. All the scripture says is according to the regulation for the women. So what that means is that there was some type of regulation that they had to undergo 12 months of beauty treatments. Now, based upon these simple facts, the purpose of the beauty treatments was likely more than to just create a beautiful woman for the king. But it was also for health and hygiene. In a dry climate that is subject to drought and water shortage, people did not bathe frequently. Mm. So thankful God knew what time, what time to birth me into existence. So glad. So this 12 month process, might be thought of as a cleansing, hygienic exfoliation, followed by refinement with fragrances. Now the prescribed beauty treatments can be found in Esther the second chapter verses eight through 12. Now here's what we know about these beauty treatments. The beauty treatments according to the expositor's Bible commentary is to scour and polish. So this made the women clean, which revealed their natural beauty. And these beauty treatments also involved the use of essential oils and special foods. 
So let's talk about these special foods that was part of these beauty treatments. Ancient Persia, which is where the story of Esther takes place, is part of modern day Iran. As such, Persian cuisine is very similar to the Iranian nutrition. Rice with herbs, loaded with vegetables and lamb, leavened and unleavened bread, flavored with milk, sugar, or herbs, as well as hearty stews brimming with vegetables and goat. Now these were staples in the average Persian citizen's diet. Now throughout its history, dates, figs, citrus, apricots, cherries, grapes, and pomegranates high in minerals, promoting good body function and antioxidants, which repair and protect the body at the cellular level. Apples, plums, and pears all assist with digestion, maximizing nutrition. And some would say that these foods of ancient Persia are the embodiment of a true anti-inflammatory diet. Persian physicians and philosophers considered food or beverages as the key to reviving the body. Consuming food could either weaken or strengthen human character. And they believed that these maximizing foods made a person gentle and noble. So now that we've talked about the foods that were a part of these beauty treatments, let's get into essential oils. Now listen, I know that there's some type of rumor, something out there that says essential oils are of the devil. Well, essential oils are all throughout the Bible. I mean, it, it's, it's in the Bible, y'all. So I don't know where y'all get it's of the devil. But any the who. I don't want to assume that everybody understands what essential oils are, so let's break that down. Essential oils are compounds extracted from plants. The oils capture the plant's flavor and scent, or its essence. Thus the term essential oils. Essence of the oil. Essence oil. Oil of the, essence of the plant oil. Oil plant. Y'all know what I mean. So although scripture doesn't reveal much about treatment of, with essential oils, it is thought that the women of this harem had daily massages with olive oil, cassis oil, myrrh oil, and honey to moisturize, heal, disinfect, and promote uplifting emotions. So let's get into what these oils mean. Myrrh oil is said to increase spiritual awareness and strengthen memory. It is believed to have anti-aging and hormone-like properties. It stimulates circulation, decreases inflammation, soothes inflamed skin, prevents wrinkles, and so forth. But the oil of myrrh represents death. The oil of myrrh was used to kill things off the women's bodies that were not supposed to be there or it was used to heal weakened areas. Put a pin in that. The myrrh oil was used for six months, so it's almost represents six months of killing off, dying off, and healing process. Now the remaining six months, the following oils were used. Olive oil, cassis oil, and honey. Olive oil, similar to myrrh, had some anti-inflammatory and antioxidant qualities. It softens skin. Cassis oil helps with emotional flare-ups, you know, during that time of the month, women. Honey, as stated before, helps retain moisture as a mild antiseptic and is helpful for clearing up acne caused by hormonal changes. And so when we get into the spices that were used during these beauty treatments, there were aloes and of course, cassis, which not the oil, but actually the flower or the plant. Aloes had a bitter taste to them and actually produced like a laxative effect, cleaning everything out. And cassis is a beautiful flower that has this amazing smell. Aloes and cassia represent resurrection. What is so interesting about these beauty treatments is that they could be a combination of being uncomfortable, painful, nauseating, but on the other hand, fragrant, soothing and repairing. The treatments were meant to get things out of women, smooth and heal weakened areas. 
in essence, these beauty treatments that started with six months of killing things off and getting things out of women that was not good for them concluded with six months of resurrecting their God-given beauty. In other words, the women had to go through six months of death and six months of resurrection in order to be in the king's presence. To say that Esther had to put in a lot of work getting ready to stand before the king would be an understatement. But when the day came for her to come before the king, she was pleasing in his sight. Let's learn some lessons from Esther. She was submissive to these beauty treatments because it was necessary for her to meet the king. For me, the book of Esther lets me know that yes, we, we may have to go through some beauty treatments and many of them being a little unpleasant. Or as some of my old school Christians would say, those treatments will have you going through the refiner's fire. But God is there orchestrating all of the events in our lives to bring out of us the purpose that he desires. The book of Esther encourages us to just be patient enough to go through the process or beauty treatments and step out in faith, trusting God's process. Thank you so much for joining me today. And don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share. Bye.